so now now that Biden has been sworn in uh, as a uh, U.S. president, what of the Iran nuclear deal? OK, so this is a multifaceted answer. After Trump ripped up the deal, pulled the United States out of it in May 2018, uh, after he assassinated General Soleimani, head of the Quds Force, which is, um, he's, you know, Iran's top general, frankly, uh, after numerous incidents of aggression from the United States towards Iran, each time Iran started uh, pulling away from the deal. So Iran never really withdrew from the deal, but every time Trump did something, committed an act of aggression, they would say, okay, you know what? We're going to enrich uranium past the 3.67%, for example. Or we're going to uh, increase the number of centrifuges. You see, it was always like playing a game of, uh, of responses to, to the Trump administration, right? Oh, you're, you're attacking us? Fine, then we're going to stop following this protocol in the JCPOA, the Iran nuclear deal. We're going to stop following this one. And there's like, I think, four or five of them at this point, right? And back in, um, in November, when uh, Fakhri Zadeh was assassinated, people in Iran were outraged, and the parliament passed a draft resolution saying that, okay, for, f within the next two months, pay attention why they use that time frame because that meant they're waiting for Biden to be inaugurated. Within the next two months, if the U.S. Uh, doesn't re-enter the deal and comply with, with the JCPOA, unaltered, we are going to start enriching uranium way past the 3.67%. I, I can't remember what the figure was. I think, I think they said 20%, but, uh, you know, way past this limit that was uh, outlined in the Iran nuclear deal and which was what you need for civilian purposes, right? So they are giving a chance to the U.S. Iran is giving the U.S. a chance. They're giving Biden a chance. And you, again, one of the things uh, which Trump did is sanctions, for example, right? He was slapped so many sanctions on Iran. It's unbelievable. It's more sanctions than Syria, um, Venezuela, all of the other countries combined. Colossal amount. And so that was why Iran kept pulling away from the JCPOA bit, bit by bit. And you need to understand something. What Biden has uh, signaled, and Germany has said this as well, and a bunch of other countries, they've, they've taken Trump's position. They're now saying, yeah, we want to re-enter a nuclear deal with Iran, but we want to change it. So the reason Trump wasn't happy with the JCPOA was that he said, oh, look, Obama gave them all of this cash. Well, first of all, it's their cash. You know, frozen assets, they're still Iranian assets. I mean, uh, that's number one. And he, he said that it doesn't curb Iran's ballistic missile program, right? They're scared of that because Iran has done exceptionally well, particularly for a country under sanctions. And they have rockets that can reach Israel, for example, right? And they do take, remember, Israel does take ballistic missiles seriously. That's why they went and assassinated all those German scientists uh, who were working, Nazi scientists, by the way, who were working for Egypt in the, in the Cold War and developing their ballistic missile program. So they do take that seriously. But that was not included as part of the JCPOA because they're not, it's got nothing to do with nukes. They're just ballistic missiles. Nonetheless, Trump was like, oh, no, this is unacceptable. We have to curb their ballistic missile program. We have to stop... Uh, Iran's, this is how they, they phrase it, destabilizing role in the region. What does that mean? That means they're annoyed because Iran is supporting Hezbollah, which uh, threatens Israel and is a, a, you know, exceptional fighting force. They're, they're legitimately scared of that. It's a threat to them. Um, they're also scared of Iran's support for Palestine, Iran's support for Syria, helping them crush Al-Qaeda and uh, all of the groups that the U.S. funded. So... They just basically don't want Iran helping to resist imperialism in neighboring countries and in Iraq, of course, right? The PMU, the uh, Popular Mobilization Units, the Hashd al-Shabi, which has uh, also, 
inconvenient for the U.S. to say the least. So that's what Trump wanted. And now we're hearing the same shit from Germany, from, from Biden's team. And Iran has been very clear. We're not renegotiating the fucking deal. And I think they're right, because what's the point of having a deal if you just pull out and then say, oh, no, we, I want to change the deal. OK, what? So you're going to do the same shit with the next deal? Like, it's never ending then. You, you can't be taken seriously. Your word doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. So now we're going to see what happens. You know, Biden, he has a small window uh, to recomply with the JCPOA. We'll see if he will. But Iran have been pretty clear. We're, they're not going to agree to a new deal. This is as good as it gets. And if they don't like it, they can fuck off. That's basically it. So I, I hope that answers your question. Um, now, me personally, uh, do I think Biden is going to do it? I, I, I don't know. I honestly think that um, even though Biden and the Democrats and the media would like you to think that he's more cool headed, so to speak, uh, compared to Trump, I'll remind you that during the uh, protests in Iran in 2009, again, we talked about this, disputing the election results, the Obama administration made sure that Twitter kept service up so that they could possibly uh, help in destabilizing the country, right? Uh, in another example, they worked on the Stuxnet virus with Israel, which to me, I mean, yeah, it's an act of aggression. Could you imagine if Iran sabotaged the United States nuclear centrifuges with a computer virus? Do you think Washington would give a fuck that it was a compu computer virus and not a missile? To them, it would be an act of war. You, you would you would have a war breakout. So why is it okay to do that to Iran? It's also an act of aggression and an act of sabotage. So my point here is that the Obama administration has, uh, and of course not to mention they destabilized the whole region, which also affects Iran, right? Um, my point here is that the Obama administration, which included Biden, uh, they've been hawkish on Iran. No, no questions there. Uh, of course, you can say now, yeah, but the JCPOA is still a diplomatic breakthrough and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, but at the end of the day, you still, you know, if you look at it, really, it's still a bunch of white countries, Western countries, going to the other side of the planet, wagging their fingers, going, you better do this or else we're going to fuck you. <laughs> I don't, I mean, if you call that diplomacy, uh, okay, and nonetheless, um, I'm not holding on much hope for Biden. Let's just put it that way, right? Let's just put it that way. But Iran, they've been coming through correct, man. They followed the deal. They did not violate it. They did not, uh, they did not pull away from any of the protocols until Trump started committing acts of aggression. And I think they've exercised enormous restraint. I mean, there are many occasions where Iran could have easily responded uh, with a declaration of war. And they didn't. So you can clearly see who's being more cool-headed. That's just being objective, right? Just take all of the things that Trump did and reverse the roles and think, would the U.S. have acted with such restraint? No, they would have declared war in return. Iran didn't do that. And... Uh, They've been very smart about it, I think. Right? So Biden has a chance here. Enter the deal unchanged or go fuck yourself. We'll see what happens.